In today's video, we are looking at your setups and talking M2 MacBook Pro. I'm Mike F. Dave, and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you. And if you want the latest Apple news, leaks, and rumors every weekday at 1300 UTC, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell. And yeah, I'm having a sit down today. So, first of all, we've got a couple of questions both about the M2 MacBook Pro, so we're going to address them together. First of all, James Apple asks, is there a possibility that the starter M2 14-inch MacBook Pro will have the option to go to a binned M1 Pro in terms of connected audio peripherals, and what will the port selection be for the starter pack M2 MacBook Pro? And Levi Manning asks, I gave answers, when is the MacBook M2 coming at release date, and will it come with USB-A? Ports. So got a couple of questions here, both about the uh, M2 MacBook slash MacBook Pro and what ports will be on there, so we might as well take them together. So as I understand it, the M2 MacBook Pro, although there's been some new talk this weekend that it's going to have a LED screen, not a mini LED screen, which basically means it's a little bit of an older technology, does that mean it's still going to be a 14-inch? We don't know just yet. If they're going to keep it in the 13-inch form factor, this makes life a lot easier for us. No, it won't have all those ports. If it's the 13-inch, it will still have the same two USB type C ports uh, which will be Thunderbolt but they may well also remove that touch bar which would be I don't know is that a positive or a negative for you if the rest of the laptop stays the same just gets the M2 chip and loses the touch bar is that a net loss or would you prefer to have those function keys let me know that down in the comments section. The only reason that I'm saying this is it seems weird that Apple would kind of create a new LED display, uh, like regular LCD display, to go into the 14 inch form factor and then take the chunk out of it for the cameras and stuff. It makes more sense if they're going to keep this as a low end version that they would keep it in the 13 inch form factor. However, I think if you're going to call it a MacBook Pro, it's got to have some sort of relationship to the MacBook Pros that Apple is doing now. So the 14 inch form factor, um, with a mini LED display or regular LCD, I guess, but still getting the port selection and things like that would probably be uh, the way that I would go if I was Apple. I'd probably put it at that $1,500 uh, price point so that it's a little bit higher than it is now. You're getting a bigger display, you're getting some nicer ports, and you're probably getting a, a bigger battery even than we had in the 13-inch. So the battery life on this thing would be immense, and I would think that Apple would really push that as being the kind of piece to resistance for this laptop if you if you will it would make sense that this is the one for pros who need to keep working all day and for the pros that need all the power um when they need it that's when you go to the m1 pro m1 max macbook pros does that make sense to you i think the endurance in this would be a pro feature um, and then the MacBook Air getting the slightly shorter battery life, but still pretty good and not needing the fan, the silent working. That seems like a decent way to delineate them to me. Now, in terms of uh, USB type A ports, really don't think they're coming to anything ever again from Apple. The only thing that I think will keep them is the Mac Mini. And the reason that the Mac Mini gets them and no one else does is because the Mac Mini doesn't come with a Bluetooth keyboard or a built-in keyboard. So you need somewhere that you can plug in your peripherals. That's basically the only reason that the two ports are there. And yes, I know you can get USB-C keyboards and mice these days, but they're not widespread. They're not the norm. So that's why they're going to stay on the MacBook. Uh, that's why they're going to stay on the Mac Minis, but everything else has already got rid of uh, USB-A because it's just not a very useful port Like in the grand scheme of things. like It's not as fast as USB-C. It's not as flexible as thunderbolt it's you know it, it can't carry display which i guess that's the only other one that we get nowadays is you get a uh, an hdmi port there for some reason uh, i guess that's more for just plugging in when you're doing conferencing and that kind of thing but uh, yeah that's that's what we get and i don't think usb a is coming back ever uh, so in terms of when we're going to get this uh, it now looks like it's going to be later in the year which is very annoying i don't think we're going to see it now probably until uh, the autumn probably an October event uh, for M2. That's what things look like. I really still hope that we see it in the spring. I really hope that people are just wrong about this, but I don't think they are, um, which means I might be shaving my beard, which is very unfortunate for me. But yeah, in terms of uh, going to a binned M1 Pro, no, we've already got that. That's in the MacBook Pro, the 14 inch already. The binned one is the one that's already in there. I don't think they'll bin it any lower because you're getting towards just being an M1 or an M2 at that point. So there we go. That's that's my uh, 
slightly sad thoughts on the M2 MacBook Pro. And let's move into your setup tours. So these have come in today. We've got one from Michael Moy, who is a regular viewer. He has got a desktop from left to right, a Windows desktop, an M1 Mac Mini, a 2014 27-inch iMac, a 2010 27-inch iMac, and a bunch of old iPads that make really nice clocks around there, and iPhones making weather displays. So I like this kind of setup. I like the kind of, the fact it's reusing stuff. That's very much the way that I've done my kind of offices all the way through the years. Like I was running a 2007 no 2009 mac mini at the beginning and i was running that with three displays that was pushing it kind of hard uh, then i moved to my 2013 imac and kept a lot of the older displays so i was still using one of the old uh, G, uh, G4 Cube generation Apple Cinema displays. The Cinema HD in the polycarbonate case looks awesome. Still a really, really nice picture on that. Uh, and now we've finally gone up to having a couple of TVs up here. But yeah, there's, a, there's this one and there's a dark mode one up there, but you can't see that because it's out of shot. Great setup from Michael Moy. Uh, he's very much into trading and all that kind of stuff, which is why it's all covered in graphs. I thought it was just a really funky wallpaper. Next up, Brian Montero. Uh, this is kind of more of an audio setup, which I think looks awesome. Uh, an M Audio Oxygen 49 MIDI keyboard, Presonus IO station, 4C as my audio interface and controller, a pair of Tannoy Reveal 502s for my speaker monitors used for editing music, and the audio part of video productions. As my secondary speakers, I use the audio engine 2 plus mostly as multimedia speakers i also have a 2020 ipad pro which is used for some drawings and as a logic remote but mostly lives on my bedside as a media consumption device for rare occasions that i game i have a mini super nintendo entertainment system that connects via hdmi to my 32 inch samsung m7 smart monitor only 60 hertz but for music production and occasional 16-bit gaming it's perfect for my microphone, I use a Rode NT1A condenser microphone, and the heart of the desk is the 2020 13-inch M1 MacBook Pro, I'm guessing, uh, with 16 gigs of RAM and a 1TB SSD. Yes. So, great setup there for audio editing. The fact that the M1, uh, which is not a super powerful bit of kit, but, uh, you know, absolutely powerful enough for logic and things like that, really really cool thank you for sharing and team kinetics last on our list today team kinetics incoming setup video which he has sent we will put this over the top i'm not going to subject you to the s club 7 that he was playing in the background though because it'll get my video taken down and i also wouldn't put you through that but 14 inch macbook pro m1 pro with 10 cores 16 core gpu 32 gigabytes of unified memory apple magic keyboard no touch id but it's in space gray yeah, that's a pretty cool flex anyway, just having the space grey one. Um, Logitech MX Anywhere mouse. iPhone 13 Pro Max. M1 iPad Pro 11 inch. Samsung T7 1TB SSD. A Dell W19 Thunderbolt dock. Western Digital MyBook 6TB USB 2.0 hard drive. This is the one that we were talking about the other day in terms of storage. And uh, that the uh, USB 2.0 is quite slow. It really is. Uh, Dell 24-inch P2421D QHD monitor and a cheap Amazon soundbar. Um, I'd be really interested to know as well, that sound Amazon soundbar, does that sound better than the MacBook Pro speakers? Because they're supposed to be pretty awesome. Uh, I know the 14 isn't quite as good as the 16-inch in terms of bass and things, but let me know. But Brad, again, thank you very much for sharing your setups. Anyone else that wants to share a setup with us, just hit me up over on Twitter. You can drop me uh, your video or photos and your list of equipment down in the DMs. And I think this is a pretty cool little thing to do while things are a bit quieter on the Apple front. Sure, there'll be some news anytime soon. March the 8th looks like our day for having an event. Fingers crossed. Please, please March the 8th which means 1st of March, we will know. Uh, again, apologies for the lack of videos last week. There was, I think, three out of the five days that we actually managed to do it. We did do an extra video of IK Answers, so you got four out of five. That's not too bad, I guess. Um, but things are just a bit crazy at work at the minute. We're just getting ready to open the cafe. We'll give you a little video tour of that once it's up and running. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.